What's going on, y'all? Um, this is Isaiah Fowler, aka Mr. Swab, Mr. Starts with the Vision. And today is um, January 7th, January 7th, and it's around like 1 p.m., 1 15 p.m. Um, it's Sunday. And so, you know, this is my, my blog slash vlog about um, research that we did for uh, the, the Swab Eyewear, the sunglass company. So, you know, if you're just tuning in, I'm documenting the whole process of me building a business. It is a luxury sunglass company. I'm starting from scratch. Um, I have a podcast, Starts With A Vision Podcast, and I'm documenting everything. So it's on my website, right? The whole journey. So every you know new article, every new video, you may be watching this on YouTube alone, go to startswithavision.com to you know find out more about the journey. So this is the visionary's voyage. So Today we're talking about research and I did a ton of research on this business that I'm starting. So when you start a business, you want to do research. That's where you're going to make your money. The money doesn't come from, you know, the products and stuff like that. The money comes from your research that you do. So first off, you want to make sure that there's already somebody in your niche right that you're looking to 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 go into because if there's nobody in there then maybe there's no money there right now if you are doing something like brand new and you're the first one you're probably gonna need a lot of money to burn through to be able to see success in that but I did my research and so I'm gonna be telling you about every single thing that I did research on so first thing was the com competition competitors now this is a very like vague and broad thing because it's all about like what competition were you looking at and stuff. So what I did was I went through some forums, some blogs, um, I listened to some podcast episodes, and I really started to see who all the major players were. Of course, you have Gucci, you know, D and G, all those big ones, but who else, right? Um, Ray Bans. Um, you know, there's Blender's Eyewear, there's Proof, they were on Shark Tank. So I looked at all of my competitors. And then there's another competitor as well, and they have like a monopoly. So there's a company called Luxottica, and what they do is they create the, the, the frames and the shades for Dolce Gabbana, Versace, um, Chanel, you know, Gucci, all these major designers, right? And they have like a, a, a agreement with them. They like license it out, the, the, the design out. And the designer gets a portion and the company Luxottica gets a portion. So when I learned about this, I was super excited because I saw how open this industry was, right? Because they are like the Procter & Gamble of sunglasses. So with Procter & Gamble, you have Tide, Downey, you know, um, all these different lines of things, but it's still all under one company. So that's the same way Luxottica works in the sunglasses industry. So they have this monopoly, um, you know, in the in the whole industry. And when I saw that, I was excited because in my mind, you know, there's a there's a need in the market for what? There's a need in the market for private companies. And there's no brand with a story. There's no sunglasses brand with a story. So I was super excited when I found out about you know, I did research on competition. The next thing was I started researching manufacturers. So manufacturers, <clears throat> I got on Alibaba, I got on Google, I got on all these different websites that you can get on, and I started just looking up manufacturers in the Middle East, in Europe, in China, in the US, and I was just like going, and I was on WeChat, I was on WhatsApp, I was on Skype, just calling people in Amsterdam and stuff, just trying to figure out what route did I want to take? What was their quality? What was their quantity, minimum order, quality amount? All these different things that you're going to need to know if you want to start a product-based business, right? Because, yeah, you can drop ship, but if you want to kind of own your product and you want to be able to put your brand on the product and stuff like that, then you're going to have to know the minimum order, quantity amount, stuff like that. So I was really just on the phone like every day, like most times in the evening because overseas they were able to talk they were you know time ahead of me so then I got down to a couple manufacturers 
and I ordered my, my samples. And then from there, I said, okay, I know who I believe that I want to go with. And the way that I chose, I made my decision was just based on um, their professionalism, how prompt they were and get back to me, um, their selection, um, just the vibe that I got from them and talking to them and vetting them out and stuff like that. And so that's how I chose my manufacturing. And, and you know, you can get a, a manufacturer in the U.S. You can get a manufacturer wherever. Like, that's not the problem. The problem, not, not the problem, but the issue is, you know, who do you want to deal with? Who do you trust? Right? And the way I contacted them was as if I was a product sourcing manager at a major sunglasses company. So when I hit them up, that's what I was saying. I wasn't saying, I'm looking to start a company. I said, I am a product manager specialist or, you know, whatever at a major sunglass company. We're looking to, you know, um, get a new manufacturer for sunglasses. Also, what I did was I did marketing research. So in, in, in my marketing research was, you know, I looked at all the other companies, sunglass companies, and I looked at how, not how they were marketing, but, you know, um, for example, there's a, a tool you can use called spyfu.com. And so I went to spyfu and I said, what Google AdWords are I using and all these different things. And then I also looked at online marketing, offline marketing. Those are two completely different things. Online marketing, you have YouTube ads, Bing AdWords, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, um, Pinterest, SEO, all these different things. So I was looking at all of those and then the offline, I could go sponsorship route. I can get my stuff in stores, physical stores. I can um, you know, do pop-up shops. I can do all these different things. So my thing is, how do I want to do it? How do I want to go about it? What do I think will be the best ROI for me, right? And it's a lot. And so I was like, hmm. And so also what's important is when you think about online, let's go Facebook ads versus Google AdWords. Now, I know somebody who does e-commerce and he runs no Facebook ads and he's making $1.5 million a year off of Google AdWords and Bing AdWords. So the thing about it is, even though Facebook ads are very great and powerful, here's the thing. Facebook is interest-based. Google is fact-based. And Google is still the number one search engine in the world. So think about it. When you are on Facebook, you're not typing for anything. You're just scrolling. So when you see an ad, you're not primed to purchase. So the customer has to go through a process in terms of, you know, um, getting them ready to buy, especially a product, $100, $200 plus. On Google, when you are setting up campaigns, people are typing, <clears throat> searching for something to purchase. What that means is on Google, you're able to market to people who are actively looking to swipe their card. On Facebook, that's not the case. You know, and also I was thinking about what way will this brand best be presented? You know, organic Instagram, do I run Instagram AdWords? I mean, Instagram marketing, all these different things, influencer marketing. What do I want to do? Even on offline. But the main thing that I knew is I wanted to I wanted to have a balance of both, online and offline. Because what I've also learned is every successful company, brand, influencer, entertainer, they all have a good, good, good um, you know, presence physically. People want to feel you and they want to see you in person. That's one of the biggest things that I learned. So I'm not going to be one of those brands. We're not going to be one of those brands where we're only online and that's it. We're going to be touching the people. And since I have a podcast and things of such, I can actually put on events and get out there in the community and then touch more people because we already have that platform. So that's what I was thinking in terms of like the marketing. And that's what I had to research and really hone in on. Another thing was um, the customer experience. And this is kind of like operations. How do I want the customer to feel 
from the time that they see our advertisement to the time that they get the product and even after. So what does that process look like? That's what I was thinking about. And so I read this book, The New Gold Standard, um, and it was about how the Ritz-Carlton pretty much became the Ritz-Carlton. What courtesies do they use? How do they, you know, what are the things that they do in order to be the Ritz-Carlton, be high quality, right? So I was going to send my stuff off to a fulfillment company, but we're going to do all that in-house now because I want to be able to control the product and I want to be able to control the customer experience from the time somebody orders to the time that somebody, um, to the time that somebody gets their product. Another thing that I researched was the product itself. Not just sunglasses, but the evolution of sunglasses past the last hundred years. Um, you know, how much do good sunglasses weigh? So I know how much Ray-Bans weigh. I know how much I want my sunglasses to weigh. I know what I want them to look like. Um, you know, what's the width of them? How's the bridge? You know, what's the temple? All these different things. So I really immersed myself into this because, yes, I may wear sunglasses from time to time, but I really wanted to be able to know my product in and out so that if anybody asks me anything, boom, I have an answer for you. What is it made of? What are the lenses? All these different things. So product research was very, very, very um, intense. And another thing that I did was I went on Reddit.com. And with Reddit, you have all these different subreddits of any kind of topic you want to research so i learned about consumers their behavior what they're looking for what they're not looking for what they're willing to pay what's reasonable all, but all these different things is what i was looking at and you know i learned a lot about the consumer and so with the consumer you can get on reddit yourself and just learn about whatever topic you want to learn about as well so reddit is a really 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 good source so those are the things that i researched also even about the launch and I'm gonna do a whole nother article about the launch because I asked myself do we want to do a Kickstarter campaign or do we want to do pre-sales those are two different strategies in themselves right so the the research that I did was very intensive and it was a lot so if you are looking to start a product based company you want to make sure that you hone in on your research also another thing is how do I want to handle inventory how much inventory do we want to purchase? How much do we want to keep coming in? Like there is so much to think about and I'm glad that we did the research because I really was able to see what would be the best use of this and you know so many different variables and things are still getting ironed out right now but I feel a lot better now as opposed to if I would have just started, if I would have just launched. So I'm very glad that I'm putting in the, the, the work and I'm putting in the, the work in terms of researching to figure things out because when you do research, it becomes factual. And now you're making decisions based on facts and not feelings. And if you can make a decision based on facts, then you'll be a lot more successful because you already know. And another thing, here's a bonus. Know the trends. If you can focus on the trends, then you can be good. So I looked at the trends like what was the past uh, 10 years in sunglasses, like the sunglass market. It's only going up. So like 2024 is going to be even higher than what it is now in terms of like gross sales and how many people are buying them and stuff like that. And also, you know, people, they're getting tired of just the same brands, Louis Vuitton, Gucci and stuff like that. They'll buy those, but we're in an age where people want things, they want different things. And so I knew that this would be my, my different thing, if you will, you know, and people would buy it and invest into it for themselves and for their image. And, and, and it stands for something good. There is no sunglass company that, that's pushing a positive message rather than just buy this money. Right. So starts with a vision. Suave eyewear this starts with a vision. Everything you do in your life, it starts with the vision. And that's what I am so adamant about. And I'm extremely passionate about as well. So that is this, you know, video to support the article of this whole blog post, you know, of this whole article. So if you want to follow along this journey and you want to get notified every time that this, every time that this video goes, I mean, this, um, you know, a new video or a new article goes live, then go to startswiththevision.com slash voyage. 
just to put your email address in so you can immediately get notified. So I thank you so much and I'll talk to you um, on the next video. I don't know exactly what the next topic is going to be, but it's going to be fire. I think it's going to be about money. Like, you know, how, how much is going to be need to be invested and stuff like that. So I'll talk to you soon.